Ladies and gents, this is the Geekom AS6, an ultra small gaming PC about half the size of an RTX 4090. Inside this tiny box, we have the Ryzen 9 16900HX, which is an 8-core, 16-thread processor running on the Zen 3 architecture. It also comes equipped with a 680M onboard graphics card, which is set to be comparable to a GTX 1050 Ti. I'm very curious to see how this little guy can handle gaming as well as a little bit of productivity on the side. But first, I want to get the pricing out of the way. When you compare prices to a custom PC, the Geekom AS6 actually comes out much cheaper. Now granted, this isn't an apples to apples comparison by any means because it's really difficult to compare prices of a desktop PC to a notebook. PC, but I did my best to match the same performance and the specs. So I went on PC Part Picker and selected the cheapest component for each category while trying to match the same specs and performance. And the total came out to around $760, which is about $30 more than the AS6. One thing you've probably noticed is that I put only $15 for the Windows key instead of the original price of $120. Because why would anyone pay full price when you can get a Windows 11 key for around $20 and a Windows 10 Pro key for $15 at yourcdkey.com. Just make sure to use the code TS20 to get that extra 20% discount and afterwards they will email you the key and all you have to do is go into your activation settings of Windows and put it in to get rid of the watermark. As far as the rest of the specs, we also got 32 gigs of memory running at 4800 megahertz and a one terabyte PCI Gen 4 M.2 SSD. What's cool is that you can also upgrade the memory and the storage if you like. It's actually very easy to gain access to the internals. Just remove four of the screws on the bottom and slide open the cover. You can add one more M.2 SSD drive and one 2.5 inch HDD. For memory, you can add up to 64 gigs total. In the back, you'll find a healthy amount of connectivity. You get two HDMI 2.1 and one DisplayPort 1.4, both of which can support up to 4K 120Hz. There's also a total of four USB ports, one of which is a Type-C. And in the front, you get two more USB 3s and one more Type-C along with an audio jack. So if you count all the ports together, including the Type-C, you can rock a quad 4K monitor setup. Okay, it's time to test it out. Let's start off with a simple boot test. Okay, here we go. Oh, I didn't connect the HDMI cable. Damn it. All right, here we go again. I'll be surprised if it boots up in less than 20 seconds. I feel like anything under 20 seconds is considered fast. Whoa, that was fast. I was not expecting that. 14 seconds, a little under 14 seconds actually, because I stopped it a little late. That's impressive. That's faster than my PC back at home. Okay, before we jump into the gaming benchmarks, let's take a look at temperatures real quick. Um, I had the PC on idle for about 10 minutes or so. And for the most part, the temps were stable. And then this past two minutes, the temperature started to rise out of nowhere, as if the system was on load, even though I didn't touch anything. That's a bit bizarre. But for the most part, the GPU was idling around 35 degrees Celsius. That was before it started to rise up until 62. Um, and then same thing with the CPU. It was stable at around 37 degrees Celsius. And then it started to rise along with the graphics card, peaking at 90 degrees Celsius. And it's kind of just been fluctuating ever since. But yeah, pretty interesting. As far as total power consumption, looks like we are pulling in a total of 21 watts of peak power. This is while the system is idling. Um, looks like the temperature is actually starting to drop back down to what it was before. Interesting. But yeah, let's jump into some gaming benchmarks and see how the AS6 performs in 1080p gaming. Okay, first game we are starting off with is Valorant, which is also the game that I suck most at. Uh, in terms of settings, we're going to start off with high and then slowly lower the settings to see how much more FPS we can get. And right off the bat, we're not doing too bad. Oh, I thought I could get that guy. Oh my god, I am so trash at this game. All right, let's, um, let's get the Vandal. So yeah, we're getting pretty close to 200 FPS, steady, 1080p, high settings, which is definitely playable on the AS6. I'm also playing with no sound, so I'm gonna be twice as worse. One kill. 
two kills. This is the most I've ever gotten within like 15 seconds, you guys. Actually getting lucky here. If there's any pro Valorant players watching, please let me know in the comment section how I'm supposed to shoot. Am I supposed to tap? Am I supposed to hold down the mouse button? Whatever I do, it's not working. I am terrible at this game. Look at that. Unbelievable. So yeah, I mean, we're averaging pretty much between 170 to 210 FPS in high settings, which is definitely playable. Let's go ahead and switch the settings down to low. All the way to the lowest. Everything else is off, bloom, distortion, off, off, cache, start. okay. All right, so this is the absolute lowest settings and we're actually getting a little over 200 FPS, so. We did see an improvement. Oh, 240. Yeah, we're consistently getting more than 200. So anywhere between, I would say 190 to 260 FPS on the lowest possible setting. So if you guys have like a 240 or smarter, this is probably what you want to play on. Low settings for Valorant. See, see, I don't know what I'm doing here. Why is he, why isn't he dying? Why isn't he dying? What? Oh my god, what is this game? All right, next up is Apex Legends. This is a game I'm slightly better than compared to Valorant. We're gonna start off with high settings, it looks like, but for the streaming budget, we're gonna set to four gigs of VRAM because that's how much VRAM the 680M has to work with. So we're gonna try and stay within that limit. That way we don't experience any stuttering. Also, for some reason, I don't know why, this PC doesn't support MSI Afterburner or GPU tweak. So there's no way for me to look at the hardware information while I'm playing the game. Sadly, only Fraps works. So at least we can see the FPS. It's gonna be really difficult without sound. Oh no. No, 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 no. Oh, wow. Mmm. Should have popped it sooner. All right, let's try this one more time, but let's go ahead and land somewhere far away from the action. That way we don't get clapped as soon as possible. I can already tell you guys, it's not gonna be playable in high settings. We're barely even reaching 40 FPS in the air. Outside, we're getting around 40. Inside, we're going a little bit over 40. I don't really think this is playable, especially if you're used to getting over 100 FPS. Oh yeah, this is way too laggy. Oh my God. Yeah, this ain't a chief. Let's go ahead and lower the settings down to low. Low, low, low. All right, everything's set to low. Shadows are disabled. Can we at least get 60? Yes. Yes, much more playable. There we go. We're getting above 60 FPS. That is what our goal is with this PC. I wouldn't say it's enjoyable, but it's definitely playable. One thing I've noticed is that even while I'm playing uh, on Wi-Fi, I haven't experienced any lag whatsoever. The built-in Wi-Fi 6 definitely comes in handy. Like my router is upstairs in the second bedroom back in my house and I'm outside in the studio right now. So the fact that it's able to connect to my router without any connection issues is pretty impressive. You got people? Oh, Jesus. Whoa! Where'd he come from? That's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. See, I didn't even know the door opened because I have no sound. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, well, Apex Legends is definitely playable in the lowest possible settings if you want to achieve over 60 FPS. Okay, Forza Horizon 5 is up next. We are going to start with the absolute piss poor quality settings, which is the low preset. There we go. I don't know how the game still looks this amazing. It still looks good. And we're getting over 70 FPS in the lowest possible settings, you guys. This is not only playable, but this is definitely enjoyable. I feel like you don't need anything more than 60 FPS when it comes to racing games. Okay, let's go ahead and bump it up to, let's go high, why not? 
Not much of a difference. That's pretty freaking impressive, you guys. We didn't take that much of a dip, increasing the quality to high. We dropped, actually no, we did. We, we dropped about 20 FPS, actually. Um, the game does look better, obviously, but I don't notice a significant difference. Unless I look at the footage side by side, I can't really tell exactly what changed. I'd much rather play Forza Horizon 5 in low settings if it means I get over 60 FPS. But I mean, this is still playable, without a doubt. So I guess it really comes down to, do you prefer quality or do you prefer FPS? You know, again, we're trying to find that balance between playable and enjoyable, right? I think for Forza Horizon 5, low settings or even medium settings is the way to go. But it's definitely playable on this mini gaming PC, that's for sure. Okay, as much as I hate playing fork knife, I gotta do it for the 12 year olds watching. So we're gonna start off with DirectX 11 and we're gonna set it to the high preset. We're also gonna max out 3D resolution. That way we're playing native 1080p and everything else is pretty much set to default. Oh my lord. Look at those frame drops. This is actually insane. <laughs> Maybe it'll stabilize when I land on the floor. Let's just give it a chance, why not? Oh my, this is so bad. This is definitely not even playable. Even with the low frames, I mean, it's not, it's just stuttering way too much. I'm gonna die here. I, I can't believe I got a kill. What? That had to be a bot. That had to be a bot. It's just way too much stutter. Look at this. Oh my God. This is so bad. Whoa, what the hell? Where do you come from? Okay, that was not playable, you guys. Okay, let's go low settings, but max out the 3D resolution so it's native 1080p and then everything else is pretty much set to off or the lowest possible settings. Let's try this. This is what's wrong with society. Okay, I mean, this is definitely a lot better than before. We're averaging close to 120, 130 FPS, less stuttering, but I noticed the stuttering is still here. It hasn't completely gone away for some reason. Nice, okay. Slap juice. What the heck's a slap juice? What? Is our shotgun still OP and fork knife? Or do they balance it? You've gotta be kidding me, dude. There's fall damage? They ask you how you are, you uh, say that you're fine, and you're not really fine. Okay, the last setting I wanna check out on Fork Knife is the performance mode. This is also low settings with 100% 3D resolution. Okay, baby, now we're talking 150 FPS indoors on the performance mode. This is definitely playable and enjoyable, I would say. And guess what guys, no more stutter. I'm definitely happy with these settings. When in doubt, always go performance mode. That's probably the best settings you wanna play on Fortnite anyways, if you wanna maximize the most FPS. 160 FPS indoors. Okay, let's check outdoors. Okay, we dip down to 120, 107, 106. Okay, yeah, we're, we're dipping quite a bit actually. Whoa, 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 please don't kill me. Not yet, 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 not yet. I can't die now. This has to be a bot. Can't be this bad. Yeah, you're definitely a bot, dude. You too, apparently. If you wanna play Fortnite on this mini PC, I'd say it's playable. All right, time for some Modern Warfare 2, which is my favorite game. We're also playing my favorite map, Shoot House, and we're gonna start off with basic settings. Oh my God, this is, oh, this is so bad. Is motion blur on? Hold on. 
Oh, this is not playable. No, 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 this is not playable. We're actually getting over 60 FPS, but it just feels so sluggish. Oh my God. Oh my God, dude. I don't even know how I'm getting these kills, to be honest. And I'm playing with no audio still. Whoa. I mean, this is basic. I'm scared to bump up the quality, guys. Like, I'm struggling on basic already. Is it really playable? If you, if you call this playable, then sure. All the power to you guys, but... This is not playable to me. This is definitely not enjoyable. All right, boys and girls, the last game we're testing out is Overwatch 2. We should be getting some nice frames in here because it is a less demanding title. And we're gonna start off with high settings. So yeah, just as expected, we're getting pretty much around 90 FPS in high settings, which is not too bad. So in action, we're actually dipping to the 70s. Where is my entire team? There's like only two people here. Nice, gotcha. <laughs> High settings, definitely playable and I would say enjoyable as well for Overwatch 2. Let's see how much more frames we can get. Let's bring this down to the lowest possible setting. So restart is required for some of the settings to take into effect, but lowering it down to low, we actually jumped up to 120 FPS. looks pretty bad, but I mean, if frames are what you're after, then I feel like low setting is, is perfect. We're actually not doing too bad, believe it or not. Little do they know, I'm playing on a mini gaming PC. Who says you need a high-end system to game? Nice, let's go! Who knew a 680M graphics card is all you need? Okay, now I wanna take a look at temperatures on full load. So I've been gaming for about an hour now, and it looks like the graphics card peaked at 78 degrees Celsius with a minimum of 46. And then for the CPU, we peaked at 97 degrees Celsius. So it's a bit toasty in there, but did it thermal throttle? That is the question. So if we bring up hardware info and we scroll down to the CPU section, we can see that the CPU did not thermal throttle. So even though the CPU was pretty close to reaching 100 degrees Celsius, the fans were enough to keep the temps down so the system doesn't thermal throttle. That's pretty impressive. So you can't have all play without some work. How does this mini PC handle productivity tasks such as editing videos? So I have Vegas Pro 17 pulled up in front of me. I know this is probably like the worst editing program to use, but unfortunately this is all I have guys. I'm not efficient in Adobe Premiere or Final Cut Pro, so we're gonna use this for our benchmark. So I'm gonna drag over some pre-recorded videos. This is from Cooltech under 50 for June, by the way. So you guys get a sneak peek if you haven't watched the video. So I do wanna increase the preview quality to at least good on auto. Let's see what it looks like with the playback. Not bad, no stuttering so far. Let's go ahead and skip over. Oh wow, not bad, this is smooth. This is shot in 4K 30p by the way. I'm impressed. You know what, let's max it out, why not? Wow, it's still able to keep up. Let's go ahead and skip over again. Wow, it hasn't started once. Am I missing something here? Why is it so smooth? That is beautiful, oh my goodness. Okay, let's add some effects, shall we? Let's go ahead, do a little bit of color correcting. My hands are looking very pasty, so let's add a bit of saturation. Let's go and save it. And then let's add the same saturation on all the files. Okay, let's try this again. Oh man. Okay, let's do some transitions. This is usually where my PC lags when I'm adding transitions and I'm playing it back. So let's see how this PC handles it. Let's do a linear wipe. That's not bad. 
Wow, okay, let's add some text. Dude, that's so smooth. This is full quality, by the way. I might just ditch my PC and get one of these, to be honest. You know what, this might be a really great travel PC for like CES and PAX and even Computex if I need to edit videos. But we have yet to do the ultimate test, boys and girls. Let's add a 3D effect. Composition, let's do 3D. All right, here we go. <laughs> Are you serious right now? Oh man. That's insane. That's insane. Looks like the eight cores and 16 threads are really being put to good work here. That's beautiful. That is beautiful to see. So yeah, I mean, if you wanna buy this even just for editing videos, this is, this is perfect. I feel like this would primarily be used for productivity and then gaming would be like a secondary or a casual thing on the side. I was honestly more impressed with the productivity performance than the gaming performance of this little PC. And it kind of makes sense when you think about it, right? Like there's a Ryzen 9 processor with eight cores and 16 threads paired with a GTX 1050 Ti equivalent. It's not the most balanced system. It's more CPU heavy, which means that it will excel more on CPU intensive tasks. The gaming aspect of this PC is just a bonus and it shouldn't be the primary reason why you should buy this system. So with that said, if you guys are looking for a tiny workstation PC that you can also game on casually, the keyword here is casually, then yeah, I think this is pretty freaking awesome. Especially if you're going after that super small form factor. But if you want more gaming performance, then this is simply not it. Either way, I'll drop a link to the Geekcom AS6 down below, along with a $20 discount code just for my subscribers if you guys wanna check it out. But also let me know in the comment section if you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more like it. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I'll see you guys very soon in the next one.